Hello, uh, friends of the internet. I'm uh, Austin uh, from Austin B Media, uh, and I'm here with the uh, filmmaker of The Underbug, uh, Shujat. Uh, let me know if I mispronounce that. Uh, and the stars, um, Ali, um, oh gosh, A A uh, Ali Fazal, uh, Hussein Dalal. Um, and do we have Arena here? Arena Fatima here? Uh, no. She's, no okay i just wanted to make sure um but uh thanks for jumping on a call on this um uh sunday uh with me um uh, i know you guys are super busy with uh slam dance coming up in uh i i um so for those who don't know about the underbug uh it's going to be screening uh saturday january 21st and J january 23rd uh, at 10 p.m. and 3.15 p.m., respectively, both at the Treasure Mountain Inn Ballroom. Uh, I kind of like to describe it as a mystery horror thriller, uh, and it's going to be screening along with a docu-short called Addresses. So yes. uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so, Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Austin. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh so first, I want to start out uh, and ask, what is what was the starting, the genesis point, the idea for the underbug? What what got this all started? So Austin, yeah, uh, I I had an idea on on similar lines, which was you know marinating in my mind for quite some time. But uh, when we were hit with the pandemic, uh, my thought was you know how to adapt it. Uh, to the times of uh, the pandemic, because we shot it in, during peak pandemic in August 2020. And uh, also in terms of, uh, you know, what was happening around us, uh, the atmosphere in the country, all across the globe, um, socially, politically. So it seemed like the idea was, was, was a good fit. Of course, logistically, we had to, you know, work things out. Mumbai had just started opening up. Uh, people could move around with security passes. And uh, we came together, uh, you know, a bunch of us, about 35 of us uh, for a 10 day, uh, I would say, trip that we uh, took. And uh, we shot for seven days and we came back with a film. That is that, that is a tight schedule. I don't think I would have thought that this would be shot in seven days but you know hey uh that's it that's insane congratulations for shooting in just under just over uh just a week yeah thank you thank you austin yeah it was something that we were experimenting and uh you know uh we all were uh in it we uh loved the idea it was something which was important and we thought that a story like this should be told it was more personal from each one uh, of us you'll hear from them as well uh, mm -hmm. So that's what uh, we went in uh, with, you know, just some pure passion to tell uh, tell a story which we believed in. Yeah, and speaking of the story, I, I kind of want to key in on one of the uh, aspects of it. Um, at certain points, this feels like a kind of mystery movie in uh, of sorts, where the two rioters um, are just kind of wandering around the house looking for this thing i won't say what to uh not to spoil um but um can you can you kind of give some thoughts on wh where that idea came from to make it almost kind of a mystery um and what did you draw inspiration from uh my my inspiration for uh, for that part of the story was uh you know twofold one is uh personally uh as a filmmaker I love telling, uh, you know, stories of the unknown. Secondly, the major inspiration came from the pandemic. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the social environment in the country wasn't really good. But when the pandemic hit us and everyone had to, you know, run back into their holes and people forgot their differences momentarily. Uh, and uh, because we were fighting an unknown entity, you know, a, a enemy which is larger than us. Uh, which was the coronavirus. So that was the impetus in terms of creating uh, the mystery and the horror of it and how these two warring men actually come together uh, and forget the differences when they're faced with, you know, something which 
uh, they really don't know about. And I, I guess speaking of those rioters, I want I want to ask a question of either Ali or Hussein. Hussein. Um, and let me know if I'm mispronouncing any of your names. Um, so what did you, can you talk a bit about your characters and what was uh, important to get in the, uh, get right? Sir. Ali, go, go first. All right. Um, sorry. Could you repeat that, Austin? Get get right as yeah. what? What do you mean? Uh, you... What you really wanted to come across to the audience. Oh. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't sort of start off like that. I think, you know, what we wanted to portray to the viewer. Uh, I suppose a lot of my character was um was a, a mirror or reflection of um what hussein was playing and uh and there were these truths that we had we we you know we we made notes we had in mind uh we discussed these things because we did not go by a by a single bound bounded script there was a script but then there was another and there was another and there was these different drafts that used to keep coming from all directions and and it was a marriage of these these ideas and, and thoughts. And so we would keep weaving them as we went along. And as you know, Hussein mentioned earlier in an interview that we shot the whole film in, in chronologically. So we didn't go back and forth, but mm. we, and, and so we sort of snailed, you know, past every obstacle one by one. I wouldn't say snail. I mean, we finished it in eight days. So that was pretty quick work, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was, uh, I suppose, at the end of because our takes were really long. Sometimes, mm -hmm. like the, the nine to ten minute takes, which were just without a cut, so we wouldn't know if it's if it's the right time to sort of stop. So we wouldn't stop because, unfortunately, or fortunately, Hussein and me have done stage before, so you know our director wouldn't call cut, and we wouldn't cut, and we just go on. And then, of course, you know, we were controlled and we were tamed and almost, I think, manipulated in many ways by Shujat, by who, you know, who's our director and and, and sort of kept in line. Um, but something felt right uh, at the end of the day. And that was the yeah. only reason why we moved on to the second day. Uh, we wouldn't move on otherwise. And um, it was a bit unconventional uh, to begin with, the, the way we shot this. Um, yeah. Yeah. So did you, so you, it's in one location, it's in this house. So yeah. speaking of your stage experience, um, did you kind of have to learn stage directions of, Hey, I've got to take a left in this house to, in order for this thing to happen. Um, because you, it's the takes were so long. Yeah. I mean, we... uh, the fun... No, I mean, the, the, fun, the fun thing about that was that from the from the top, our director, Shujat Sadagar, was so clear um, about the kind of story he was telling. And he wanted it to not be our house, right? It's not our house. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the one thing we've learned from stage is that you make a clean exit if you're supposed to make a clean exit. And you make <laughs> a messy exit if you're supposed to make a exit, messy exit. So the good thing is that because... The, we, we, we sort of, he used the space. The director, the DOP, uh, the director of photography, the Sadhguru they used the space so intelligently that uh, as much as you may feel like the space is a character in the movie, it also is very evident that it doesn't belong to us. Yeah. Um, us being aliens in that space or the space being alien to us was a very clear emphasis. Our director had a very clear vision of what we wanted, what he wanted our characters to seem like to the audience and he wanted what, what he wanted the space to look like to the audience so the usage of space was more um uh more for the more the way the director used it um you know because he was very clear he wanted to use it like this and he wanted us to be look like we've entered a space that's alien so he sort of used the space magnificently and he always was very clear uh even when he was ranking the location um where he wanted a house that was big enough that wasn't wouldn't get in the way. At the same time, it would be spooky enough and have enough, uh, enough distinctly different areas. So yeah, yeah, it kind of looks like a um, military hospital you'd find in a movie of sorts when you're walking outside um, at the beginning and 
um, of the film. I'm like, I I swear I've seen that building before, but then again, it feels so. I think that keys in on some um, on the familiarity, but yet unfamiliarity of this house. Huh. Interesting. Um, that that question, Shuzad, 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 Shuzad I will answer that question. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, Asin, um, of course, the house again out of uh, uh, came to came to us out of uh, the necessity of the pandemic. Uh, it, it belongs to a friend, uh, you know, who I called and I requested if he can shoot without making any, um, you know, financial contributions to them. <laughs> and uh, it was really sweet enough to agree uh, to let us, uh, you know, shoot uh, in her house. It's a 150-year-old house. Uh, essentially, what I wanted yeah. to do is uh, in terms of uh, uh, the space uh, and uh, and the cinematic movement, I wanted the uh, the characters to be moving, right? Always, uh, almost like searching, 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 discovering. It's a, probably, it's a metaphor for discovering themselves, discovering either there's some skeletons in the cupboard. I don't know. But I wanted to have a certain uh, movement in the film and I wanted it to be broken with some dead stops. Uh, so there are scenes where, you know, the movement completely goes off like the dinner scene and then, you know, we are just mm -hmm. there with with the two guys. So that was a conscious uh, decision. We were fortunate to get the house. So uh, uh, the cinematographer and I mapped the space out in terms of uh, you know, we knew that we are not going to probably end up uh, editing it in chronology, but we, I wanted to shoot it in a chronology, in a, in a linear fashion. So we set up all the rooms in the entire house and we just let both of them uh, play. It was like a playground. And we said, OK, you know, now you go ahead and you guys do your stuff and we'll be there to capture it, you know, rather than me just purely directing that you sit now, you get up now and you walk four steps and you hit this mark and you turn left. Uh, I said, we will do all of that, you know, let the camera do all of that. And you guys just feel free to move. And as Ali said, his and uh, Hussein's uh, stage experience really kind of, uh, you know, helped that. And I wouldn't have, as a filmmaker, taken the chance if I knew that my actors were not experienced in uh, handling stage. So that gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, that they will go the extra mile in terms of the takes yeah and um speaking of using the space um i i the one thing that's really interesting about this movie is th there's only naturally occurring sounds you know you don't hear anything that's made up essentially so um can you talk a bit about using the the sounds and the and i guess uh, in the same vein, the lighting of of the area to kind of shoot the movie. Yeah, uh, lighting wise, I'll tell you honestly, we were blessed because for all ten days that we were there, uh, it rained. We shot during peak monsoon as well, uh, and it really helped and added to the atmosphere. You know, the gloom and the the feel of it. It really kind of created while we were shooting it. It was just constantly uh, raining. And um, uh, we had gone with just four lights uh, and, you know, we we did a lot of stuff with candles and candlelit uh, stuff. Uh, it's really uh, on the edge, the darkness in the, in the film, but it's also real, uh, you know, in that sense of it. And it really helps the genre uh, and the film to come uh, through. Uh, on the second uh, part of it, in terms of the sounds, I wanted nature to have its own uh, you know, role in in, in the story uh, because the house is surrounded uh, by a beautiful small uh, foresty uh, area, and I wanted those sounds to come out. In fact, if you uh, you know do watch the film again, uh, a certain diget diegetics of you know Ali's character is is not there in the sound. You know, it's it's only mm -hmm. uh, Hussein uh, who has diegetic sounds, and uh, Ali really doesn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that was the yeah you're right that, you were yeah 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 that that's what we were kind of you know aiming and playing for with the sound design as well. Yeah, and to talk a bit about um, the nature aspect of it, um, you do start off the film um, with some macro photography of this um, snail, which was kind of an interesting idea, I thought. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, my 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 take on that was, you know, uh, inspired by Milton's Paradise Lost. I wanted to create, you know, a world which was pure and unadulterated, and is, uh, uh, you know, trespassed uh, by the serpent, that being Hussein or the human race, not really Hussein. Uh, I wouldn't call him a serpent, uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, the human stress passing and the fatality of uh, you know the things that we tend to kind of ruin. Nature being one of them. Yeah, and then um, either one of you can answer this, Ali or Hussein. Um, but the movie is kind of this trip down insanity uh, lane. Um, so how did you have to kind of play that? How, how did you have to play it in a way that didn't feel overstated? Um, uh, we just followed the script. To be honest, the story was very, very, very clear in the director's head. Um, from the, the day the idea was born, we were very clear about the, the graph of each character. And uh, uh, because uh, our director Shujat Bhai uh, has uh, he, he's he's a visual thinker, so he always told us where he wanted us to end up and how he wanted us to end up there. So we were following the graph of the story, what needed to be said, um, and we just tried to stay. Uh, within the within the parameters of each scene, I'm, I'm, I know it's a very boring answer. It's not a, an artistic answer where, you know, I did this to find the character. But sometimes you've got to just stick inside the parameters of a scene and to see what best, what best can I bring as the character, not the person or the actor, just as the character. What best can I bring here? And um, to sort of conclude... The story goes insane. Yeah. You know? And you just have to stick with that story. <laughs> and and you just go insane with it. So I think that's what my approach was, Ali. In yeah, no, you're, you're bang morning. on. Um, I, I mean, I remember at one point as uh, as an actor in, in that space, because it's a, it's a very... It's a very old house. As in fact, a friend of ours who had, who had given us this access, and uh, you know, imagine yourself in actually a, a house where there are a lot of people, and none of them can see you, and the one you're interacting with is the only one who can see you, and it was this uh, this insecurity, this fear that nobody is recognizing you. And to be able to sort of connect with this one person. And there was this, this looming fear that all these, I mean, from, from the radio, from, you know, the, uh, the other objects in, along the story, in the house. They, I know they were inanimate objects, but for, they just, they were very noisy um, characters in the movie. Um, and those I felt, for me as an actor, I thought that was, that was very interesting and I played off that. Played off that a lot. Played off a lot of these objects uh, because uh, it was it was this portrayal of of an alpha male or an idea of an alpha male very dangerously uh, you know towering uh, sort of um, uh, entity um, that that turns out to be what what it does eventually. I mean, you know, don't want to give out spoilers, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. A a and I think there's a scene with that radio where you guys are where both of you are listening to the radio and you both have different thoughts on the song that's being played, but then you all kind of coalesce into the same idea together. Yeah, I think that's, that's the one where we're sitting next to the radio, right? We're talking mm -hmm. about, about God and if he believes in God and he believes in, um things i suppose it's a question on belief right and that's that's yeah. probably the driving force of of uh, the narrative that this, i mean this, just, yeah the the corruption of 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 the belief system that we i mean been just through. as a joke exactly what ali said the belief system difference uh, uh, you know uh, 
just quickly to add into what Ali said, you know, when uh, when Winterfell was having trouble with Cersei in the last season of Game of Thrones and they realized that, you know, we hate each other, but we have a bigger problem. Let's solve the White Walkers first. Um, <laughs> at the pandemic was the White Walker for every for all the people in the world that, that wanted to hate each other. But they said, wait, 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 let's pause the hate. There's a bigger problem. So you know how Jon Snow went and said, listen, buddy, we'll fight our war. Just let me solve this white water, white water situation. So for us, that scene is actually that. We both hate each other. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna agree with each other, but there's a bigger evil. It, this, this film is literally that. That when two people hate each other, if there's a bigger evil that can be a threat to the both of you, you will join hands to try and, you know. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> I, I don't think I've heard of a season, the last season of Game of Thrones being talked about in such a positive light before. <laughs> that's th that's what the film is about. Don't hate love. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, uh, I wish. Um, oh, uh, Khaleesi would have remembered that in the last season. <laughs> it would it would have yeah. solved a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but goodness. Uh, but um one last thing um sujat um i want to talk a bit about the score um a little bit um so there's it's a weird score i'm just going to be playing with it um there's throat singing and what i'd call screaming synths so can you talk about how that contrasts with what we talked about earlier with that those natural sounds uh, yeah, so uh, again, uh, yeah, the score score took its uh, time. I, I scored the film four times over. Uh, you know, as, wow. uh, because I, 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 yeah, I was looking at a at a distinction, and and Clinton Sarijo, my uh, uh, you know uh, my uh, my music director, did a phenomenal job uh, of it. Uh, I was looking at a contrast uh, to uh, to nature, like the the, the film uh, has uh, way too many contrasts which I wanted to also uh, include in the sound of it, right? I mean, we're talking about mm -hmm. Independence Day celebrations on the radio and people are, you know, uh, happy and celebratory and uh, having a great time with their families and inside in the house, you see what is actually happening, right? So I wanted to juxtapose uh, the the sounds of nature with, uh, with a texture of sound which created a sense of hollowness uh, in me. So, you know, we use different instrumentations uh, like a Tibetan drum uh, and, and a more local uh, instruments to create a, a certain sense of uh, sound in terms of the disturbances that are happening with the characters. I must also say hugely inspired by, um, you know, um, I'm a big fan of Robert Eggers and The Witch and The Lighthouse as well whether the fog horn keeps going and it, it plays with you know with your with your head so i the was Northman's you, really good if you yeah, haven't seen yeah. it i have i have terrific yeah yeah so so sound wise i wanted to play something which is more earthy uh in terms of the texture of it uh right and it's yet just juxtapose it with the nature uh that i was uh, you know including into the sound design of the of the film so we go at real high peaks and then there are scenes which are like really silent, which creates a vacuum, like the dinner scene, for example, or when yeah. they're sitting and having a chat, there's the entire vacuum and you will not hear any uh, room tone as well in that. So, uh, yeah, we've tried to, you know, finger around a bit with the sound and yeah, create that kind of a disturbance. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting... It's an interesting thing, all these contrasts, because you think they would add up to, well, that they'd be distracting. But really, I think it just helps en enhance the decline in sanity that the, of the movie um, that the movie's going on. Yeah, it does. I mean, we had to cue the, uh, the spiraling of, uh, you know, the characters and we had to go batshit mad by the end of it i mean I, I i knew that and i wanted the score to kind of you know push uh, uh push that in, in in terms of the mind mind space of uh, both ali and hussein and their characters 
Yeah, and I think um I think you did a pretty great job. Um it's it's one of the most interesting horror movies I've seen in a while and I've I saw a lot of horror movies last year. I did I think I just watched what did I watch? Bo bodies 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 Pearl. Yeah, a bunch uh, yeah, of other things. Yeah. Um because I'm I'm voting on the Film Independent Spirit Awards, so those are two nominated horror movies which wow. yeah is an interesting sentence because horror tends to um, not get nominated. Um, but on the subject of horror, um, what were your, what were your inspirations for this movie? I kind of want to talk horror inspirations. Yeah, I, I'm a, um, no, also I'm, I'm a horror buff. I love horror films. It's my favorite genre. Uh, and I like, uh, I really like twisted, uh, uh, you know, uh, narratives where where I, it gets me thinking so it's just not the scares uh, which are just momentarily uh, happening for that moment yeah uh, jump scares work I mean the times where I spill like you know uh, stuff on myself uh, but yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's the psyche of the human horror which kind of stays whether it's you know Rosemary's Baby or whether it's Shining I mean these all all these films have really been uh, instrumental in me, you know, falling in love uh, with the horror genre. And more recently, as I said, Robert Eggers, Ari Aster, um, you know, Jordan Peele. Uh, I mean, fantastic uh, narratives. Uh, and, and the horror comes from the narrative of it. So, yes, I mean, also in terms of certain thrillers, whether it's, you know, uh, Silence of the Lambs, Primal Fear, uh, for that matter, I mean, you know, these are films which have, um, you know, um, uh, Mind Hunters uh, films which mm. really delve on the, uh, you know, um, uh, True Detective. The first season was 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 phenomenal, and uh, it's it stays with you. Uh, I think all uh, all of us involved, Ali, Hussein, uh, you know, the crew. Uh, I think I can speak for all of us. Uh, when I say that uh, we wanted to create a piece that, you know, would stay with people, would get them to think. Uh, I think that was the intent uh, also behind coming together for this. Yeah, I th I think the thing I was trying to do, which I, I got to give you props. Uh, you did make me, you di did hide the twist for me pretty well. I was not expecting that um, <laughs> because, well, the reason I say this is when I went and saw Arrival, I knew the ending as soon as the movie began. And I was like, oh, that's what the twist is. I'm not going to say what the twist is for anyone who hasn't seen it, but uh, I, I notoriously will figure out something as soon as the movie starts. And it's it was refreshing not to have that happen for once. <laughs> that's great to hear, Austin. Yeah, yeah. It's great to hear. Arrival also ruined it for me. I mean, because I had read Te Ted Chiang's um, uh, shot, so I knew, you know, somewhere what the ending is going to be. But I mean, nevertheless, what a fantastic film. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I think I... Uh, yeah, it's a great film. Uh, I think the same happened with Annihilation. But uh, anyways, it, it, it is a fantastic movie. I bought it on Blu-ray a few years ago when it came out. Um, but... Um, I just want to thank you all for uh, taking the time on uh, the weekend uh, um, to sit down and interview uh, for this interview because um, it's going to be a busy week next week or not next week yeah. Um, yeah, next at the week. end of the next week yeah, next, next week. week yeah Um, because uh, I think is this your world premiere it is it is, yeah, yeah, so I hope people see it. I'll include a link to uh, see it. Um, you can see it uh, two different days, like I said before, um, on January 21st at 10 p.m. Uh, I believe this is all central. Um, yeah. uh, and yeah. January 20, Monday, January 23rd at 315. Uh, Mountain, you can... Mountain Standard, Austin, it's Mountain Standard. Okay, Mountain Standard Time. So, Austin, can, uh, yeah, um, Utah is, is Mountain Standard Time, and the people around the states can buy a pass for seven ninety nine. Start, and that will be available right after. Awesome, um, but yeah, I'll include links to that, and um, 
with that said, um, thank you, all of you, uh, Shujat, uh, Ali, um, um, oh gosh, uh, Hussein, for joining me today. Thank uh, you, Austin. Thank you so much, Austin. Thank you. I pleasure. hope you, I hope you all have a great Sunday, uh, slam dance. Oh goodness, not <laughs> Sundance. But if you go to Sundance, let me know. Uh, um, <laughs> they're both in Park City. I mean, they're uh, yeah. the Treasure Mountain Inn is right across uh, on the same Main Street that Sundance yeah. is on. So maybe sneak in to a few movies. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Austin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Austin. Thanks a lot. Bye.